In other words, Allah is saying, you need something special. Plenty. What isn't special? Is the sun not special enough? Is the earth not special enough? Are you not special enough? Is history not special enough? Are these ruins not special enough? You are surrounded by ayat. Uh, Bukhari and Muslim, the moon is being described as splitting. I'll add, there are other narrations in which the Quraysh came and asked the Prophet ﷺ, show us a miracle, and he pointed to the sky and then the moon split. Those, those are narrations that are also found, attributed to Anas anhu among others. Now, classically in tafsir, we find three major views about this ayah, the one we're about to deal with. We're gonna get into the surah, but before we do, I want you to have this background understanding. So there's three major views. I've taken this from Al-Qurtubi. Similar things have been said by, by Al-Mawardi. Others have talked about it too. This is just a sampling of what classical scholars have said. عَلَى هَذَا الْجُمْهُورِ مِنَ الْعُلَمَاءِ ثَبَتَ ذَلِكَ فِي صَحِيحِ الْبُخَارِ وَغَيْرِهِ مِنْ حَدِيثِ إِبْنِ مَسْعُودٍ وَغَيْرِهِ Actually, so he says, this narration is absolutely firm. Bukhari confirms it. Other, other narrations exist. There's no way to deny it. This, it is what it is, the moon split, done. That's one opinion. And that's the majority. The vast majority of classical Islamic scholarship and tafsir scholarship accept these narrations literally, and they say the moon did in fact split, it says what it says. That's number one. Second, قَالَ قَوْمٌ لَمْ يَقَعْ إِنْشِقَاقُ الْقَمَرِ بَعْدْ وَهُوَ مُنْتَظَرْ أَيْ اقْتَرَبَ قِيَامُ السَّاعَةِ وَانْشِقَاقُ الْقَمَرِ وَأَنَّ السَّاعَةَ إِذَا قَامَتْ إِنْ شَقَّتِ السَّمَاءُ بِمَا فِيهَا مِنَ الْقَمَرِ وَغَيْرِهِ Second opinion, classically, this is not talking about something that happened now. It's talking about something that's going to happen on Judgment Day. The hour has come close and the moon shall split. The, fi'l, the past tense is being used because in Arabic rhetoric you can use past tense for future all the time. For example, Allah says, Ata amrullah fala tasta'jiluhu. Ata amrullah, the literally means the decision of Allah already came. But actually, the, uh, the decision it's referring to is the coming of Judgment Day. That is not come yet, that is coming in the future. But he says, Ata amrullah. Similarly, describing Judgment Day itself, he says, Wa kana, kana wa'dan maf'ula. It's a promise that's already been fulfilled. He uses the past tense to talk about something in the future. Now, so there's a group that says, classically also, that this ayah isn't referring to the splitting of the moon. It's referring to the splitting or breaking apart of the sun near Judgment Day. Like other places in the Qur'an, إِذَا الشَّمْسُ كُوِّرَتْ وَإِذَا النُّجُومُ كَدَرَتْ Or, you know, خَسَفَ الْقَمَرُ وَجُمِعَ الشَّمْسُ وَالْقَمَرُ Right? بَرِقَ الْبَصَرُ وَخَسَفَ الْقَمَرُ وَجُمِعَ الشَّمْسُ وَالْقَمَرُ In Surah Al-Qiyamah, the moon is going to get eclipsed. And so this is a description of the moon getting eclipsed or the moon falling apart near Judgment Day. That also exists in classical tradition. They don't deny the hadith, they're basically, understand this, they're saying that hadith may be there, the Qur'an's not referring to it. The Qur'an is talking about something else, that hadith is a separate incident. And this, this might be hard for you guys to understand, how can it be two separate incidents? Let me explain. This happens a lot. You can find a hadith that's talking about something, and you can think that the ayah is talking about the same thing, but they're actually talking about two different things. For example, a, a famous example of that is Ashabu Lukhdud. Qutila Ashabu Lukhdud. An Nari Dati Al Waqud. Idhum Alayha Qurud. Wahum Alama Yafaluna Bil Mu'minina Shuhud. Famous so, uh, you know, ayat. The people of Ukhdud were destroyed. Now, classically, one opinion is the people of Ukhdud are the people of hellfire. Ukhdud are ditches in hell. And they're being described as people that are going to be destroyed because of what they did with believers. And there's a long story about the people of Ukhdud and a boy who believed and then the king tried to kill him and there's a long story of Ashab and then all of his people were, were burnt alive and you might be familiar with that Ashab al story. That story doesn't fit with the surah at all, actually. They're two separate things. And they, they, even though the same phrasing is being used, you understand? So there were classical scholars who said that incident may have occurred, but it doesn't have to do with this surah. This surah is talking about the same thing Allah talks about in so many other places, that the, the, the stars and the sky as we know it is going to start falling apart. 
What even further is this understanding is what's coming in the next surah. The same word, in shaqqa, is going to be when shaqqat is sama'u fakanat wardatan kaddihan. Fa'idhan shaqqat is sama'u. The entire sky is going to tear open and split open. So here the moon is splitting open and eventually the entire sky is going to split open. So that's our second opinion. The third opinion, interestingly, this is the least found, is أي وضح الأمر وظهر والعرب تضرب بالقمر مثلا فيما وضح. They say the moon split is an Arabic phrase. You guys use English phrases all the time, like I don't know if you've used this one. The cat's out of the bag now. When you say the cat's out of the bag, there is no cat and there is no bag, but everybody gets it. You understand? So when you say the cat's out of the bag, that's a figure of speech. So one argument is actually in this site classical poetry that the moon splitting was a figure of speech for things have become clear. So what they're saying then is the hour, the hour has come near and things have become very clear. The hour has come near and things have become clear. That was the third opinion classically. But the first opinion I mentioned was the majority. And the majority was no, it in fact split. The narrations are coming and saying they in fact split. Now, I'm going to land myself in trouble, but I'm going to ex ex explain all of this. And expect, so there's three arguments, I'm going to go in reverse. If you accept the argument that this is talking about judgment day, right? That the splitting of the moon is not now, it's going to happen on judgment day. Then the next ayah doesn't really make as much sense. Because in yaraw ayat and yu'ridu, if they saw any other miracle, they would still ignore it. Clearly means that the first ayah is talking about a miracle, so that doesn't it doesn't connect anymore. So that makes the argument weak. The second is it's a figure of speech, but Quran has never used this kind of figure of speech anywhere. Every time Allah uses a figure of speech, He has something called tajrid and tarshih. They, they use these terms in balagha. But the point is, it's very clear that it's being used figuratively. He doesn't use something that. A vast majority of people are like, no, no, the moon split, and somebody says, nah, 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 this is like the cat's out of the bag. That doesn't happen, because the Qur'an is not unclear like that, and gives code like that. It uses, you know, al lugha sada the common language, what everybody understands. But if you ac accept the narration, then we run into what I just said. You run into a scientific problem, how are you describing the moon splitting? And you run into a historical problem, nobody else saw it. Now, I'm going to tell you what I personally, after, after researching this subject myself, after discussing it with my colleagues that are specializing in hadith, that are specializing in Islamic history, that are specializing also in tafsir, hours and hours and hours thinking about this, I came to the conclusion that I am not convinced of the moon physically splitting, but not because of the scientific problem, and not because of the historical problem because of another problem. And that problem I call the Qur'anic argument problem. But let me tell you why not the scientific problem. Because Qur'an breaks science all the time. Fire gets cold in the Qur'an. Ibrahim gets thrown in a fire, it gets cold, doesn't it? So physics getting stopped is not an issue in the Qur'an. Young people can go to sleep in a cave and sleep for 300 years and get out and they're still young. That happens in the Qur'an and I believe it. There's no like, oh no, no, this was suspended animation. This was some kind of cryo chamber. I don't, I, don't, I have no reason to, or, or the, the water splitting in the case of Musa alayhi salam, kullu firqin katawdil azim, each parting of the body of water looked like a mountain standing. It's not, oh no, this was low tide. It's not low tide. You can have two mountains on either side on low tide. That doesn't make any sense. So, and, and then in Surah Al-Baqarah, a dead person is coming back to life. The sun is deviating from the cave in Surah Al-Kahf. There's all kinds of unscientific stuff happening in the Qur'an all the time. And I believe in all of it. In fact, the surah right before this one, something really unscientific happened. The Messenger وسلم, ascended into the heavens, didn't he? Yep. Once you get past the ozone layer, where's the oxygen? Oh yeah, you're gonna get past the oxygen. There's no space suits. And then you're gonna go past stars and galaxies, the more you get closer to the stars, the, the insane temperatures that can scorch and burn. How is this happening? And light, light from the stars reaches my eye in maybe up to 13.9 billion years, the furthest stars in the galaxy. 
light years of travel. When you look at a star in the sky, you're looking at billions of years of history. That's not the star as it is now. That's the light that's been traveling for billions of years. But the Prophet ﷺ travels across not just one, all seven heavens, and then comes back in the same night? How? What? what? How? I can't. It takes me like three hours to take a direct flight from Texas to here, and he was in Jerusalem, and then all the way... This is not scientific. And I'm completely okay with that. Because my Rabb can create this world of cause and effect, and he can pause it whenever he decides. This is not why I believe in the Qur'an. I believe in the Qur'an on its own merits. And once I came to believe in it, then all of these things became easy to believe. On their own, you'd be like, how could you believe that? How could you believe this? How could you believe this? You're looking at all the fruits. The, my Iman doesn't come from the fruits, it comes from the root. Right? The, when the root is set, then you're fine. So from that point of view, if the moon split, then the moon split. And if nobody saw it, what's the big deal? Musa alayhi salam was in the desert, and he saw a fire up in the mountain, yes or no? He saw a fire. His family couldn't see it. He said, Inni anastu nara. He doesn't say, Alam tarau naran? He said, hey, you guys see it? Nobody could see it because nobody was meant to see it. The only one who was supposed to see it was who? It was Musa. If anybody else saw it, they would have ended up there too. Hey, what you guys doing here? <laughs> nobody else was meant to see it. The same way. Tarawnahum mithlayhim ra'yal ayn. In the battle of Badr, you see people double their size. Allah makes them see. Sahaba will describe angels, you know, they can, they can see the enemy's neck cut before the sword reaches. They, they saw it. So having someone see something and others can't see it, happens all the time in the Qur'an. So if only the people of Makkah saw it, and the people of Taif didn't see it, and the people in India were like, nice moon night, and they didn't see a split, completely possible. Completely possible. Rasulullah can be in the cave, right underneath at the feet of the kuffar, and they can't see him. Didn't that happen? He can pass right through them and they're blinded. Didn't that happen? So that's not, I don't have a scientific issue with this at all. I don't have a historicity issue with this at all. I'll tell you why. Musa salam was the leader of which nation? The Israelites. Yeah, he was their leader. First he was leading them when he was in Egypt. And in Egypt, is he in, a, is he in an easy situation or a tough situation, you tell me? Tough. He's in a tough situation. He can't just say, you know what, I had enough of Fir'aun. I'm gonna take a break. I'm just, I'm, I'm out. Give me a couple of months, I need to detox. So he takes his fatah and he goes on a journey and he meets with Khadir and they go on a journey in Surah Al-Kahf while Fir'aun is doing his thing. That's not what's happening. So definitely that didn't happen when he was in Egypt. Also, the, the Israelites are in captivity. You can't exactly leave. Then they're in the desert, right? They cross the water, they're in the desert. When he's in the desert, he's leading who? The Israelites. He leaves them for a little bit. What did they end up doing? Worshipping a calf. And, he, and he, you can't say, well, I had enough of this. I'm going to go on a journey to find someone knowledgeable and learn from them. You guys do whatever you, you cow, chicken, whatever you guys decide is not your problem. Sounds like a you problem. I'm done. That's not what happened either. It seems what's clearest, uh, Lucy describes this, what's clearest is just like time pauses sometimes. It's a journey in which the Israelites didn't even realize his absence. He goes on this journey and he comes back and this journey is entirely a secret even from the Israelites. This is why there's no record of this journey in Jewish tradition. It's only in the Quran. The Jewish tradition has the Exodus, it has Moses in the desert, it has Moses in Egypt, it has no Moses with Khadir. There's no, there's no, no nothing, none of it. It's only in the Quran. So it's a ghaybi journey. If Allah can give a journey to my Prophet, والسلام, to the seventh heavens, and people can't even notice, then a journey across a few mountains and a little bit by the sea, uh, that's much more possible. You understand? Guys, sorry for the interruption in the middle of this lecture. Just before you continue, I want to let you know and encourage you that I want you to sign up for BayinaTV.com and help others sign up or even sponsor students for BayinaTV.com so we can create worldwide communities of students that are studying the meanings and the benefit and the wisdom of the Qur'an uh, and are inshallah ta'ala spreading that in their own circles. Thanks so much. So I have no scientific criticism of the moon splitting. I also have no historical criticism of the moon splitting. I have another problem. <coughs> I and actually my colleagues. My, I'll tell you my go-to 
Uh, I am a huge fan of uh, Hadith research. I am not a Hadith researcher. I, am, I don't have the brain cells to do that kind of work. That's serious work. So what I've done, alhamdulillah, given the amount of access that Allah has given me, I have found some of the leading hadith researchers in the world, and I show up at their house. And I say, hey, can I have your WhatsApp number? Can I like, if I have a question, can I like text you? And so I have contact with Dr. Akram Nadwi, Sheikh Hussain, some others, and whenever I have an issue, I just call them and say, hey, can you tell me about this moon splitting situation? Can you tell me about this hadith? Can you tell me about this hadith? So you guys don't have that kind of access. I'm just trying to flex a little bit. But I'm saying that uh, I have, the, I, I, and I use that access. I go to these experts and say, explain this to me, please. Help me understand this, please. Right? So what I'm about to share with you is after a lot of these discussions with some of the leading hadith experts in the world, including Dr. Akram Nadwi. Okay. So the problem is not scientific or historical, the problem is what? The Qur'anic argument. So let me now take this session to just explain the Qur'anic argument. Before we get into the surah, I want you really to understand this, okay? This is a lot of Qur'an, but let's begin. This is different places in the Qur'an, okay? Disbelievers came to the Prophet. Allah quotes them. They come to him and they say, how come no miracle comes to him from his Rabb? How come his God doesn't give him a miracle? Tell them the miracles belong to Allah. I am only a warner to, give, to warn you clearly. That's my only job. Isn't it enough for them? That we have given the book to you that's being read to them. They said, show us a miracle. Tell them, I'm just here to warn you. And then Allah says, isn't the book enough? Isn't the book enough? No, no, show us some special effects. Allah says, is the Qur'an not enough? No, show us something like, you know, like pre previous prophets. Now the Israelites said, we're not going to accept. Surah Ali Imran. I mean, we'd love to accept you as a prophet. You seem like a nice guy. But we have a rule. If you're not chosen by God, we can't accept you. And the only way we know you're chosen by God is if you sacrifice an animal and a fire comes from the sky and barbecues the animal, that's how we will know God has chosen you. And until, that ha until we see that, <laughs> how can we accept you as a prophet? And Allah says, قُلْ قَدْ جَاءَكُمْ رُسُلٌ مِّنْ قَبْلِكُمْ بِمَا قُلْتُمْ بِالْبَيِّنَاتِ وَبِالَّذِي قُلْتُمْ فَلِمَا قَتَلْتُمُوهُمْ Messengers came to you with all kinds of miracles and even the one you asked for, why did you kill them still? Allah is saying, I'm not giving it to you. Another time they asked for a miracle, Allah said to the Prophet ﷺ, why don't you take a ladder up into the sky and bring them a miracle yourself? I will not give it to you. Then I'll keep reading just so you get this point. They said, in, by the way, this is going to be Surah Al-Isra, the next part, Surah Al-Isra. Surah Al-Isra is maybe 8th or ninth or 10th year of the seerah of the Prophet ﷺ, okay? So it's later on. Now, why is that important? Because Surah Al-Qamar, the one we're studying, is five years before then. So this is way later. What did they say? We won't believe in you until you, you get a waterfall, water spring to come out of the, gra the ground for us. Or you all of a sudden start growing a palm garden, a, a date palm garden. And should have grapes too. And a river should just explode and start running in between the, the grape, the, the vineyard and the palm trees. Why don't, why don't we have a river in between too? Or how about you break a piece of the sky as you assume it to be and let it come piece by piece to us. Or why don't you bring God Himself, Allah Himself, or bring the angels, all of them, one after the other. Or how about you bring a house made of copper? Or you, you go hovering into the sky in front of our eyes. And we won't believe you until you send a book down to us that we can read ourselves. The book is hovering down with like a, you know, like a drone and lands in your hand and then we, then we will believe in you. Right? All these requests. Now, the problem is, the first problem I have is, Allah would have said, what, I didn't show you the moon already? 
I, I mean, I already I split the whole moon for you, and now you're asking for this stuff? Did Allah even mention the moon after this? And that's what supposedly already happened. So this would be the biggest evidence, wouldn't it? It's not being mentioned. Subhana Rabbi, hal kuntu illa bashara rasula. How perfect Allah is. How can I do any of these things? I'm just a human being, just a man to deliver a message. Then, in nasha nunazil alayhim min as-sama'i ayah. Listen to this. This is called uh, ilja. This is a really important concept. Allah says, if we had wanted, we would have sent something down from the sky. Like they're asking. We would have given it to them. فَظَلَّتْ أَعْنَاقُهُمْ لَهَا خَاضِعِينَ their, their necks would have been humbled if we did that. They would have been humbled. But if they're humbled, they're not believing by choice, are they? They're believing by force. And the whole purpose of this revelation is to make a human being believe this message by what? Choice. The choice would be gone. If, if angels started descending, if the flood water, even Fir'aun submitted when the water rose enough, right? Even he was like, okay, sign me up. What was that shahada again? <laughs> like, that's literally what he did. When the time, because it's a little late now, but, you know. Allah says, وَمَا يَأْتِيهِم مِّن ذِكْرٍ مِّنَ الرَّحْمَانِ مُحْدَثٍ إِلَّا كَانُوا عَنْهَا مُعْرِضِينَ Yeah, whenever verbal reminders come to them, spoken reminders come to them, they ignore them. They want to see something, they want to see something special. وَقَالُوا لَوْ لَا أُنزِلَ عَلَيْهِ مَلَكٍ They say, how come no angel comes? You say Jibreel comes to you? I don't see you, no Jibreel. What do you mean Jibreel comes to you? Can I see him? وَلَوْ أَنزَلْنَا مَلَكًا لَقُضِيَ الْأَمْرِ Listen to this. This is an important concept in the Qur'an. Many of you are not familiar with it. Allah says, and if I did send an angel that they could see, the decision would have been made. The death penalty would have been ex executed. وَهُمْ لَا يُنظَرُونَ They won't be given any more time. I want you to understand this rule. Allah sent miracles to prophets, yes or no? Yes. Once He sends a miracle for your eyes to see, then you have no choice but to reject. When a prophet is preaching, you can think about it, you can be hesitant, you have time to go back and forth, all of that stuff. Once you see a miracle with your eyes, once that happens, it's called Iqamatul Hujjah, now if you reject, you know what Allah does? Allah destroys you. If this surah is early Makki, and the moon has split, has Hujjah been established? Hujjah has been established. That means all of them should be destroyed. Any rejection after this, they should be what? They should be destroyed. Allah, let's keep reading. Uh, so this is in Surah Al-Ma'idah. The followers of Jesus, the disciples of Jesus, were about to be killed because they believed in Jesus. And right before the Roman armies are about to come in and kill them, they just want to feel like we're about to lose our lives. I just need some comfort. So they asked Isa alayhi salam for a for the, the, the Last Supper, the famous po, you know, portrait of the Last Supper. Ma'idatan min as sama Send us a table spread from the sky. Wouldn't that be a miracle for the eyes, yes or no? Yeah, that's a miracle for the eyes. And what did I tell you about a miracle? If you reject a miracle for the eyes, what happens? You get destroyed. When they're asking for a miracle, they don't even know they're asking for their own destruction. That is why in Surah Al-Ankabut, when they asked for a miracle, and Allah said, Quran is enough. In that same surah, later on He said, They're rushing you to get punished. They don't even know they're asking for punishment. When the followers of Jesus asked for this meal, you know what Isa salam told them? Listen to these words. God has said, Allah has said, I'm sending it down to you. So I agree, I will send you the meal. Fine. فَمَنْ يَكْفُرْ بَعْدُ مِنْكُمْ And whoever disbelieves after this meal. By the way, is he talking to believers or disbelievers? No, 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 no. He's talking to believers. The few Sahaba of Isa. They're believers. And this rule is so tough, it's not even for disbelievers. This rule is even for? Believers, he says, whoever among you disbelieves after this, فَإِنِّي أُعَذِّبُهُ عَذَابًا لَا أُعَذِّبُهُ أَحَدًا مِنَ الْعَالَمِينَ This is maybe the toughest ayah of عذاب in the entire Qur'an. Allah says, I guarantee you, I will punish that person with a punishment that I have never punished anyone ever in any nation with. <laughs> if you reject a miracle, I'm not sending it. I'm not giving it. Qur'an is enough. 
think, think, think. Hey guys, you just watched a small clip of me explaining the Quran in depth as part of the Deeper Look series. Studying the Quran in depth can seem like a really intimidating thing that's only meant for scholars. Our job at Bayan is to make deeper study of the Quran accessible and easy for all of you. So take us up on that challenge. Join us for this study, the deeper look of the Quran for this surah and many other surahs on BayanaTV.com under the deeper look section.